All right, class, I want to um, do a couple more examples of um, dipole moments and uh, electronegativity, polarity of the molecule. I, I think some of you are still having problems with it, and I was thinking about, well, what, uh, what particular thing would help here? And um, so let's look at something like uh, carbon trifluoride. Or let's do it this way: carbon trifluoride. All right. So uh, again, the first thing you do when you see a compound like this is add up the total number of valence electrons: four for carbon, seven for chlorine, and then three times seven uh, for the fluorine. So when we add this up, we get 32 valence electrons. All right. And so we're going to do a Lewis structure. And with the Lewis structure, you can put the chlorines and fluorines wherever you want to put them. Doesn't matter. All right. And we know that each fluorine has to have a total of eight valence electrons around it. So we're going to put three lone pairs or three non bonding pairs on each of the ligands here. Um, that's what those are called. The, the ones attached to the central atom. All right, so uh, 8 times uh, 4 is 32. So this is the correct Lewis structure uh, for carbon trifluoride. So the next thing we want to do is we want to evaluate each one of the bonds between carbon and um, fluorine or chlorine. So carbon to fluorine, we know that carbon is less electronegative, so it gets the partially positive than fluorine, which gets the partially negative. Same thing for this bond. Same thing for this bond. Same thing for this bond. So again, chlorine, again, is more electronegative than carbon. Again, partially negative, partially positive on the, uh, partially negative on the chlorine, partially positive on the carbon. All right, next what you want to do is you can do the arrows, point the arrows to the more electronegative element. That's important. All right. So that's our completed Lewis structure with the electronegativities accounted for. So all of this is chapter 9. And if this is what you're struggling with, it means you need to go back and do look at the electronegativities, look at uh, how to do Lewis structures. I mean, that's going to be the focus. All right. So now we're ready to go into chapter 10. And in chapter 10, what we need to do here is we look at only the central atom and we evaluate what's going on with the central atom. So the first thing we do is we make note of, uh, or first of all, let's just say this again. We are using VSEPR theory, a new theory to describe um, the, it's going to help us describe the geometry of the covalently bound molecule. So valence shell electron pair repulsion theory says electrons want to be as far away from each other as possible so they're going to take an arrangement in three-dimensional space to be as far away from each other as possible so when we look at the carbon here in carbon chloro tetrafluoride um, we have a stands for the central atom x stands for uh, the number of bonding pairs coming off the central atom which would be four and then if there was any non-bonding pairs, we would have an E, but there's no non-bonding pairs here. Okay, so AX4, this is what you have to memorize. What does AX4, uh, what cl that classification, what does that make the electron uh, geometry? Well, the electron geometry is how these will be placed in three-dimensional space. So here's a chlorine. Uh, we're going to put a fluorine here. I'm going to put a fluorine here. I'm going to put a fluorine here and maybe a chlorine going back through or let's do this you can do this you can move them around let's put all the fluorines down here and put the chlorine up here I think that would even be better remember this triangle means that it's coming out of the plane the dashed line means it's going back through the plane and the solid lines represent in the same plane as the um, screen all right so we have already evaluated these bonds we would put arrows pointing towards the uh, more electronegative fluorine. And the type of bond that we have here is polar covalent. So keep that in the back of your mind that uh, in order to have a 
polar molecule, one of the requirements is that you have polar covalent bonds. And we have polar covalent bonds. We definitely have polar covalent bonds here. So that's what the arrows represent. If they if there was no if there was equal sharing of the electrons between the two elements, then you would only have uh, a covalent bond. Now this is where I think students are getting confused. When we did the partially negative uh, on the fluorines and the partially positive on the chlorine, same thing here, partially negative on the chlorine, uh, if you try to do the imaginary line method and you say, okay, there's no way that I can draw an imaginary line and get a positive region and a negative region to the molecule, therefore it must be nonpolar, that's where you're making a mistake because what's going on here is this. Which bonds have a greater difference in electronegativity? Well, between carbon and fluorine, uh, carbon is 2.5 electronegativity and fluorine is 4.0, so that's a difference of 1.5. And between carbon and chlorine, the difference is uh, 2.5 minus 3.0, the difference is only 0.5, all right? So this bond between the carbon and fluorine is only 0.5 pulling upwards, uh, but all of these are 1.5 pulling slightly down and away. So the fluorine's uh, dipole moments are much greater uh, than the chlorine's dipole moment. Fluorine's much greater than chlorines. So overall, there is a resultant vector in this direction. That would be the general direction because notice these are all pointing downward. So this is the resultant vector, the resultant dipole moment for the molecule. That's in, the resultant vector for the entire molecule or the resultant dipole moment for the entire molecule. When we get a resultant vector, you can see there's a positive end, and now here's the negative end. So this molecule is actually polar, and it's because the fluorines are pulling the electrons much more away from the carbon than this chlorine is pulling away, and so we get a slightly positive region, slightly negative region. So this molecule is polar. The imaginary line method does not work here. And I, that's what I've said about that method is it works about 95% of the time, but it definitely doesn't work on this one. All right. I hope this helps a little bit. Uh, again, the first part up here in the box is out of Chapter 9. Uh, and, or, and out of Chapter 10, we're dealing with this theory. Uh, the key is to get the classification based off of the Lewis structure. Uh, the second thing is to draw a nice structure of it. Don't take the time to actually draw it out and make a nice picture because I, I do think the picture is really important and this is where a lot of students miss it uh, because if you draw a good picture you can interpret it much better. And again these arrows are pointing in a downward direction. These forces between carbon and fluorine are greater than the uh, force between carbon and chlorine. So overall there is a resultant vector in that direction which means the molecule itself has a dipole moment which means there's a positive and negative end to the molecule. I hope this helps. If you need further information just email me and I'll be glad to do another mini lecture uh, if I have time over the weekend uh, to get you ready for the exam on Monday.